All right, so here we have Post Spirit Nakaru or Spirit of Nature Nakaru from Senmai Showdown 2 to 64-2 or Senmai Showdown 64 Warrior's Rage. This version of Nakaru is a bit more, is actually a lot more stronger than her previous incarnate and is now a full on Spirit of Nature who rests within nature's breath itself or the Mother Nature's breath itself. She unlocked a whole bunch of different abilities and powers and is now taking on much stronger opponents than she ever did before, such as Yuga the Destroyer, a temporal being from the realm of Makai, which is the realm of the demons, the demon universe, who embodies a whole nother existence within itself. In fact, you can even see in his artwork that he has things like stars, possible galaxies and so on within this very being. This person has the ability to literally merge universes. So he's going to merge the Makai realm with the human realm, which would be our universe. Or he's going to merge the realm of the dead with the human universe. So he could rule over it. Nakaruru and Hamaru were the main two who stopped Yuga the Destroyer. Now, while in a cutscene, it had Hamru face Yuga by himself. Well, that is not the case according to the story. Nakaru was there because she had the perfect countermeasures to Yuga's abilities. In which, one of Yuga's main things is, of course, power over time. So, Nakaru, despite her being asleep for an X amount of time, somehow developed new powers, got a crowd ton stronger to the point where she could even negate these time-based hacks of Yuga the Destroyer. Meaning that Yuga cannot do something like freeze Hamaru in time, rewind time, things like that. It would not work on Hamaru because of Nakaru. And due to Nakaru being there to help in that battle and wear Yuga out, Hamaru was able to get that final blow in in the end. So that means this version of Nakaru is already capable of taking on Universal Plus, you know, based enemies here. Enemies who can at least merge universes together. Now, whether he can assure him or not, that's a whole different discussion, but the fact that, you know, you can, can freaking merge universes is already OP enough as is. But that's not where it stops, because while she showed no fear when it came to face facing off, off against Yuga, she ran into a whole different threat, like, later on. And that threat was named Ashura. And oh boy. Now, let me just keep in mind, Ashura is Yuga's literal worst nightmare. Yuga fears Ashura. In fact, their battle was confirmed to have knocked, knocked them throughout, you know, different universes and dimensions and timelines. These two battle, like hardcore. Now, the thing about Ashra is that Ashra is the leader of the Seven Kings from the Edge of Eternity. Now, Eternity itself in the Samurai Showdown is a realm of infinite time where no space exists. It's infinite darkness with infinite time, but completely devoid of any kind of space. It is essentially an infinite time dimension to the highest degree. And Ashra exists above that. And Yuga was fighting Ashra for a while before, you know, Yuga managed to overcome Ashra with its surprise hidden magic abilities. But regardless, this is the kind of person Ashra is. Ashra is extremely powerful. And Nakaru sadly bumped into Ashra. And I really do mean sadly. Because she decided to try and defend Shiki, one of Yuga's servants or ex-service during this time period because she wasn't completely under the influence yet of Yuga. And Nakaru was like, hey, I'm gonna buy you some time, Shiki, so you can run. So I'm gonna take on this guy. Now keep in mind, Nakaru showed no fear when facing off against Yuga, according to the lore. But the moment she came across Ashura, his sheer presence alone had her terrified, had her trembling. Which says a lot. If Yuga cannot get that result out of her, but Ashra can, that should let, I'll let you know that Ashra is in a whole nother tier of power. 
And at that point, that's when the quote-unquote fight begins. And my god. <laughs> my god. Nakuru did not have it for their first round at all. She, uh... To put it simply, she got destroyed. N Nakuru stood no chance. And this showed you clearly the power difference between these two. While yes, she was capable of taking on characters who can merge universes and all, destroy the planet all, she meant literally nothing to Ashura. Ashura was not having her interference whatsoever. And it was quite a sad sight to see. <laughs> Especially if you're a Nakuru fan. It was a, a very, very poor sight. Poor girl was like screaming for her life near the end. Um, but thanks to Hamaru, she did manage to escape from getting literally killed in her first ever encounter with Ashura. Now, their second encounter, she was like, okay, I actually have to fight all out. And she did, and she actually managed to knock him down and temporarily cripple him before he instantly healed. It tried to go for the kill, but was stopped by Shiki. So, again, this kind of shows that when she does go out, she can contend with these higher tier, these higher levels of power, you know, based characters here. And again, keep in mind, Ashwa is already above, Can Kanakli is above Yuga. Like, Ashra himself is essentially above the multiverse of Samurai Showdown, in a way. <clears throat> and when push came to shove, she was able to take him on. So, at that point, you already have Nakaru jump from being able to deal with planetary threats, or multi-continental threats, to universal to multiversal-based threats within the span of a year or two and just from becoming a spirit of nature itself which is pretty impressive with also the fact that she can now travel through dimensions freely and she's immune to any time-based things time-based you know hacks and abilities which means that now she at least has infinite speed which means she can move in places but has no time you know she can you know travel through time with her own speed and go on from there so this version of Nakaru is definitely way ahead of, you know, her previous version. But as you notice, there wasn't really a whole lot to cover because we didn't really, no way get to see this version of Nakaru long. And the same is going to be with the final category of Nakaru we're going to cover, which is the Maiden of Light slash Transcendent Nakaru. But before I go on, go into there, to even further, you know, go into this, is that even Maiden of Light Nakaruru is still terrified of Ashura. Because for once, she made it her objective to avoid him at all costs after their second battle. And even in Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, which is largely considered non-canon, the main difference between Ashura and Nakaruru's characters in those games is that they're true to themselves. While everyone else has been altered, the story pretty much gives you clues and hints that these two actually traveled to this realm to try and take care of the business. So Ashra literally traveled from the Samurai Shodan universe, the mainline universe, into this totally spin-off universe, the spin-off multiverse that contains all the universes of um, SNK's various series and games, from the Neo Geo to you know all these other things in this world. He traveled there specifically to look for Yuga. <laughs> And it's like, huh, Yuga's in here, cuts open a dimensional portal, and just leaves. And Nakuru, when she sees him there, straight up panics. Now, sadly, I can't find the screenshot, or at least the scene for it, because for some reason, most gameplays, and even for me, it was hard to really get those two together. But she can look up the dialogue, and she was straight up terrified to see Ashura. And this is a much stronger Nakuru, like, stronger than her spirit self. And she was terrified to see Ashura again. <laughs> so yeah um so yeah there's that but anyway let's move on to Maiden of Light Nakaruru
And here we are, the third and final category. Main of Light slash Transcended Nakaru. Wow, this has been almost 30 minutes. It's taken quite a minute, hasn't it? <laughs> but if you've made it this far, thank you. Thank you for having patience with me during this video. Um, whether I've mumbled or spoke too fast or my very <gasps> dramatic intakes, I thank you. And really appreciate it. But anyway, let's just get on into it. This version of Nakaruru is by far the strongest version there is currently. And the Samurai Shodown universe and the overall SK universe as well. But I can't say the overall SK universe because they may have some other version of her out there that I don't know about. Who is really, really powerful. But at least in the main universe of Samurai Shodown, or in the Samurai Shodown multiverse, Nakaruru. Main of Light Nakuru is by far the strongest. And just to top it off, right off the bat, she ha she is so powerful that she has transcended the very concept of time. That's right, she transcends time, which goes to a whole different kind, of th different kind of thing that I don't really have time to cover due to the fact that this has already taken so much time as is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my good friend Atari H and B, um, go into detail on why her transcending time is a big deal in terms of you know higher powers and higher universes or higher dimensions. I'll let him get into it, and I'm gonna only leave a link to his video down below because I will be taking you know an insert from his video and putting it into this. So anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's let my good friend Atari H and B take care of this. So. Go ahead, Atari. Let's take a look at one more analysis, and that has to do with astral dimensions. And who's going to be the guest for this particular point? Well, let's use Nakaruru from Samurai Showdown. Like small Why? City level. Because Nakaruru is a character upon the SNK compilation who has been shown to exist on an astral dimension. Now, most people look at this and say, all right, astral, big deal. But it's not just a big deal. It really is a big deal because in the SNK interpretations for the manga, I've already had dimension, helpers it translate the official scans. Time. It's Look called it, a space-time. According to Xanadu, it. he pronounced it as a different space-time where she is causing distortions upon space-time itself as existing in another plane of existence. This makes sense as well because Nakaruru has feats in scaling that goes to characters who've even literally went to the edge of eternity. Now, eternity is a metric utilized to measure infinite time, rather forward and backwards, because it's eternal. Now, if you're standing at the edge of infinity for eternity, which is a unit of time, temporality, in this case, or the Minkowski, if we're asserting what we learned earlier, this already, this literally already proves that they're infinite fourth dimensional plus or are beings who can traverse and transcend through time to stand on such an edge, which gives infinite speed. And again, as I've shown before, there's already places to put Nakaruru at these universal levels. All shout outs to my boy Alba G for that. But the main purpose I'm going with here is just to give you guys an example and an idea of how different series have different levels of dimensional tiering and how it can be absurded differently depending on what is stated in the story and what is being looked at and no this isn't an out all right thank you atari for that explanation with astral dimensions and you know what it means for her to transcend time again i'll link leave a link to the video to his video down below so please go check it out it'll be really much appreciated and let him know that I sent you and show him some love. But, um, yeah, so in other words, as you can tell, it's a big deal. She can exist in higher planes, higher dimensions, and there's a lot that she can do. Now, to clear thing, some things up, when he, when he showed her, like, traveling with Mui Mui and Loveheart, 
Um, that wasn't her traveling through time. That's actually her traveling through universes. But, you know, that's really a small error and not really a big deal. But, to clear, but just to clarify that. She can travel through time, though, so he's not wrong in that regard. But for that specific scene, she's actually traveling through other universes. So there's that. And again, I gotta thank him for, you know, helping translate the Japanese, you know, scans. Along with his good friend. Um, I forgot their name, but he knows who the person is. And while I did help with the translation somewhat, and at least help him get the scans... I'm not fluent in Japanese. I have to tr I have to go through a crap ton of stuff just to translate it. So when he mentioned Abaji, that's me, because uh, that's what I use. That's what I used to use for my Discord name. But yeah, all the credit on and stuff like that that goes to Atari and his good friend, who's a fluent Japanese speaker. But essentially, yeah, this version of Nakuru is really really powerful. And to put it simply. She should not be getting, you know, clapped and destroyed like she did before when she went up against Ashura. Um, yeah, she's a lot more of a beast here after merging with Gaia. Now, to put it simply, during her merger, which was, which has been over 20 years at this point, at least in her uh, series. That merger gave her quite a power boost and allowed her to travel through universes, which means she now has like immeasurable speeds, like you can't calculate it at all. She's beyond the concepts of even light speeds at this point. Even infinite speeds. She's all she's beyond that. She can travel through universes, travel through time, travel to alternate worlds, as confirmed in her SK Heroines dialogue with, I believe, Zarina. There's a lot she can do, and to get some of that information out, we're going to be going to KOF 14, KOF A New Beginning, the manga, and SK Heroines Tag Team Frizzy. Frenzy. Yes, all these are non-Samurai Showdown based, you know, medias, but this is her traveling from her universe into the King of Fighters universe, so it still goes, and it's the Maiden of Light Nakaru. So we're going to go with it. Now, KOF 14, as y'all know, the main villain and the main antagonist of this new saga seems to be Verse. Now, Verse, if I were to describe Verse, Verse is Janimba. If you've ever watched Dragon Ball Z, you know, Fusion Reborn, back in the day, we all know who, we should all know who Janimba is. You know, that entity of pure evil, you know, who is tearing apart dimensions, who is tearing apart, you know, the boundaries between, you know, the afterlife and the living world. Yeah, that Janimba. That is what Verse essentially is. He is literally KOS version of Janimba. Has souls within him, is literally tearing apart boundaries between, you know, multiple higher dimensions, including the afterlife, such as heaven and hell, with the living world or the physical universe, creating time space tears with its mere existence in multiple universes. Such as Samurai Showdown, the Dragon Ga Dragon Gal universe, the Skylove universe, and the King of Fighters universe, just to name a few. So yeah, to put it simply, Verse Verse's mere existence is already extremely powerful, and the fact that Verse can tear through things like dimensional membranes, which will go into M theory, which I'll probably have to leave the link down below because I can't take the time to fully explain that. Hopefully, Atari, if he sees this, you can explain it a bit. Um, it goes into some very high, heavy scientific theories that go into like dimensions one through like eleven or twelve, along with you know alternate world theory or alternate universe theories and alternate timelines, and so on and so forth. But essentially, versus mere existence affects all of this. So he's already powerful, and in fact, you can argue verse to be like a very high multiversal being. But the fact that in theory exists you can even argue hyperversal but that is a whole nother topic that i do not have time to explain right now because i am beyond 30 minutes at this point but essentially if i were to describe a multiverse real quick think of a large universe that has other universes within it 
a set amount or an infinite amount. Imagine it just like that. Um, and it exists with these other multiverses that, you know, surround it as well. That also contain these other universes within themselves, within themselves as well. Just a quick, I guess you say, rundown. But, um, Verse is powerful. But Nakaru was not bothered by that whatsoever. Not only could Nakaru, you know, sense, you know, what it was doing, she could see it when no one else could with her spirit eye, which allows her to see things on a higher plane of existence in other dimensions that we can't see. There's a lot. She can interact with it. She could do, to put it simply, if you put like moderate against her, his limbo clones don't do jack to her. <laughs> if I were to make, you know, a reference here. Um, it, there's just that in itself. But the fact of the matter is here is that Nakaru was not afraid of Verse whatsoever. She was like, oh, uh, he's gathering the souls from the past, present, and the future here through this giant tear, <laughs> you know, and the higher dimensions that he caused. And he's gonna have he's gonna have him resurrect here and just this thing, all kinds of stuff. She she acknowledged that there's a time paradox within the KOF universe thanks to Ash. And just so much other cool crap as well. But the main takeaway from it though is the fact that she was gonna take on Verse by herself because she's like, yeah, I think I'm the only one. she's like, I think I'm the only one who could take him down. Despite the fact that she brought literal help with her. <laughs> she's like, mm, maybe I should take him down by myself. Tung Fu Ru had to go like, nah, nah. Let the young bloods do it. You sit back. And she obliged. But the fact of the matter is that if Nakaru was comfortable enough and knew she was powerful enough to be able to take on a being like Verse, who is already extremely overpowered in itself, that should let you know just how powerful Nakaru had become upon merging with Gaia. She is a whole nother force of nature who's at this point easily, you know, hitting these multiverse level, high multiverse level plus, you know, levels of power. And that is insane, going from this girl who could stop, you know, the planet from being destroyed, to taking on this being who can merge universes, then to getting absolutely bodied by Ashura, and then, you know, fighting all out and managing to at least put him down temporarily, to now, after 20 years, being able to take on a being like Verse. That says a lot about how far Nakaru has come, and just really how powerful she had gotten over the years and she earned that power you know she had to work with what she had and that's you gotta give her credit Nakaru in this state is an absolute beast and would absolutely destroy her previous self she would utterly destroy a character like Shizuka who by the way who I didn't mention was gonna destroy essentially the entire multiverse the Cinema Showdown multiverse and Cinema Showdown 7, which I'm going to cover in another video at some point. She would absolutely body Shizuka there. Um, she could put up a much better fight against Ashura, and she would more than likely body Yuga. But yeah, this version of Nakaru is just extremely extremely powerful and you do not want to mess with her mess with her whatsoever but um yeah that's all i have for this video and i really hope you enjoyed it this was a long one i'm not gonna lie but i hope you guys enjoyed and if you sat through all of it congratulations if you didn't well i hope you skip to the end and you get to hear this but anyway i love you all Take care. Just have an overall just blessed weekend, blessed day, blessed night, morning, whatever time zone it may be for you. And I love all of you guys. Um, so please just take care out there. Be safe. And again, Nakaru is a lot stronger than anyone gives her credit for. But anyway, 
peace out guys it's been Rosal Munchausen and if you like this if you enjoyed this please like and subscribe but anyway love you guys love you guys and